Hey guys, and welcome to the podcast review. This podcast is based off the one that BSG did on the 13th of December. I know I'm quite late at reviewing it, but we do have a huge list of things to talk about. It's not going to be in the same way as my other videos. I'm not actually sure how to do the format for this. I'm just going to be reading off the list that we have, which is 42 items to talk about. Some of them might be close enough to the, be the same thing, but we just wanted to talk about basically everything that was covered, not just the big points, basically. Okay, so the first one is fix the ability to jump from every server. So this one, we're assuming might be a more aggressive region lock, so a lower ping than from the current 160 or 50, um, or even a lockout timer from, if you're changing the servers yourself, you can only do it every other, I don't know, hour or two maybe. I mean, anything longer than that would be a bit much. But a lockout timer might be pretty decent. The next one is NVIDIA Freestyle stopped supporting Escape from Tarkov as it was heavily abused with brightness. But it has now been re-added and the filters will be blocked. So I'm assuming that he doesn't want people... He mean Nikita doesn't want people to be abusing nighttime because with the current new like engine nighttime is pretty dark which is amazing so night vision is becoming more of a necessity which I'm assuming this is what he wanted so no more cheeky beakleys abusing the Nvidia freestyle which is quite nice so this next one is definitely controversial which is possibility of barter items being blocked from secure containers he did say it's still up in the air and trying to find ways of you know punishing the hatchlings but in my opinion what one pig said a while ago about taking stuff in and out of your container costing money um which is based on your stash value is a really good way of doing this i'm not so sure if they've seen that video but that is definitely one that they should be looking at and the next one rolls on quite nicely, punishing hatchlings for dying all the time and game abusing. He said that he they are extremely concentrating on this one. He's not letting us be aware of anything like this. I'm not so sure how you can punish hatchlings for dying all the time and game abusing. You have this mechanic in your game giving the people ability to run as hatchlings, so you're kind of causing the issue yourself. I know that he did say that maybe forcing people to go with a gun which is, you know, not that hard either. And in fact, I would always recommend to just at least take in a pistol because those eight bullets that you would have put in your PM pistol could get yourself, you know, a scav kill. And then that scav could have a hunter or an SKS. And then you can start, then you're already mid tier being able to take down semi geared people. That's hatchlings is something that is just makes no sense to me because you might as well just go in with a pistol. Fuel canisters will be refillable in a later update. So I put gas stations, maybe customs and shoreline might be a pretty decent way of doing it or even the tanks that you have to mark on customs and interchange. They'll be a pretty good way of filling up. It just adds that bit more of realism to the game, not getting it, you know, because there's a bug at the moment where if you just enter rain and exit, then your tank will be full instantly. They are working hard on anti-abuse for the game, which is punishable by a ban. So we've written down skill abuse, hatchling abuse, and duping abuse. Abuse. He did say that if you get caught duping items, that is a ban, as well as skill abuse. Now, I know later on that they said that they want to find other ways of um, getting around the skill abuse by adding it in, like possibly like you can have a gym inside your hideout which would be you know strength and then you get a freaking running machine to do your endurance or cycle machine those kind of things i mean you've already got the passive skill leveler which is the air filtration unit so there should hopefully be adding stuff into the game to stop the skill abuse but if you have tasks that are based on skills there's always going to be people out there finding ways to abuse the skills they refuse to add microtransactions. This one's pretty good. So it's not that they don't want to add them because, you know, I'm assuming most game developers want to because it's extra money on the side. But due to laws in Russia about gambling, 
you cannot add microtransactions into this game which is actually really good so there's no possibility of being able to buy money or being able to buy items we're going straight on to the next point is they do not support people selling items for IRL money so like on G2A or on the third party sites but tr with the translation the person that was watching he did say that Nikita said but we did say they preferred this to microtransactions so I'm not so sure if there was a language barrier but I don't know what he was implying saying that he prefers this to microtransactions I'm not so sure what's going on there but he did say that he doesn't support them but not going into depth going whether he's going to be combating this issue not that it's a big issue but it does actually bring like you can buy yourself like money in this game off those sites that cost more than a standard account so for these hackers basically you can buy yourself a standard account make a load of money send it over to your main account and then basically you, you you have unlimited accounts because you if you sold let's say 16 mil for 40 quid and you can buy the game for 35 quid you just made five pounds that take you no time at all because you got hacks and you can just go into raids and just kill people basically the next one they are hoping to add another trader tier after level 50 with elite elite weapons which will have more powerful weapons or xp boosts i wrote it down when how will they implement it i'm not so sure about the xp boost the more powerful weapons you could just have a guy like mechanic who's like a hardcore mechanic basically who has like thick boy guns and all this kind of stuff you know but the xp boost i'm not so sure how they would implement it whether the guns themselves give xp boost or if like in Borderlands, you can have guns that give you certain skill increases, but how would they implement it in this? So you might have guns that increase your recoil. I'm not so sure how like how how they could implement this into the game with the XP boost and stuff, whether it's like like drinking a certain drink or something will make you level faster. It would definitely be interesting to see how this is done. Arena will have rewards. In Arena, they will have a team separation. For example, 1v1, 2v2, and so on. So, if there's rewards for these type of in-game arenas, hopefully they'll find a way of stopping abuse of this. Like, everything in this game is, they have to think of something really great, and then you've got to find ways of stopping abuse. Because let's say you just go, you know, 1v1, right? And you go into a server, two hatchings will fight it out to the death. What are they going to get out of it, and what would the rewards be? But I could it could be quite cool if you if both teams put down let's say a mil, and then a winner gets two mil, and then obviously if it's one v one, then you know the winner gets two mil. Or if it's two v two, they both get like um, five hundred k each. That'd be definitely quite a cool way of doing the rewards in the arena, because that's something I would do. I would definitely bet on myself in this game. So Nikita did say this game would definitely be coming out on Steam after full release and possibly other platforms. So that would definitely be good and bring in a huge amount of new people to the game who are literally waiting for this game to get released. Nikita also said that BSG are confident motherfuckers are getting stuff done. So if they have a vision of doing something, they are pretty confident in themselves that they can actually get that stuff done, which is actually a good a good way of looking at it if they're, they're going to be this confident they should be able to get the starters sorted soon enough <laughs> so eod will get unique clothing which will be a pretty good way of showing your support early game and if you supply batteries to watches it will function so currently the bear one is functioning normally where the usec one doesn't actually move Mentioned again that after raid finishes, you'll get an overview of every player within. So that'll be like a way of saving your files. So like Rocket League does, where you can go back and view from every person's point of view, like CS:GO does, Fortnite does. So this might be a really good way of doing basically a mini series or something along the lines of that, that you can get your couch in third person. And also, if you can see people doing really cheeky things which might be a good way of 
you know, posting to BSG that said guy's a hacker and you can see it clear as anything. This one I'm actually really excited for. They didn't say when they were going to be doing this one, but this is definitely something to be looking forward to. They rotate loot pools every day, so players have to discover it themselves. Subtle, not a huge change. So with this one, I'm not so sure what they mean. So if they're going to rotate loot pools, does it mean that one day that the village is going to be high on, so this is on the shoreline, that the village is going to be high on medication spawns and then up at resort, all it's going to be is a drink here and there. Or if it's going to be like a small change where items might spawn in one room one day and then in another room another day like inside resort so it sticks to its like area of medication items and high value items or it's just gonna rotate like one day you could find extremely valuable things in the room like bitcoins and whatnot and then the next day you could find medical items and then the next day you can find food items it's gonna be interesting to see how they're gonna implement this loot rotate loot pools every day the players have to discover it themselves if, the, if it is going to be a big thing, I might add this to the news um, every day so you guys can work out where the good loot is, basically. Land the ability to play as scab boss with their own tasks. More choices, so multiple scabs maybe on the character selection menu or maybe paying the hideout to run as a thick boy scav. Now, with this... With this scab boss kind of thing, that would definitely be an interesting way to play. Because if you're going to be Rochella, how are the boss guards going to interact with you? Or are you just going to be basically a one-man army like you are with Killer? Are you going to be a separate person? So, so you're not going to be Rochella. You could be possibly someone who is, you know, a, a third-party scab boss. Um, it would be interesting to see how this is done and how you select your hideout. It could be possible that this is going to be with the um, Scav Life DLC, which makes um, a bit more sense where there's a DLC they're going to be releasing at a later stage. They definitely will be having an interest. Also, rolling on to the next one, Scavs will have reputation with other Scavs. Now, this one could be possibly playing again with a Scav boss. So there might be different scav factions or just one giant scav faction. We just got to see how it goes with this um, scav life DLC. I believe this is going to be the next DLC that they're going to, well, the first DLC that they're going to release with Tarkov is scav life. Adding more voice lines. So that could be possibly a, a whole new voice. So maybe you might get a broken English bear or something along the lines of that. Or just more voice lines already with the player base to add more variety. Adding compass and binoculars in the near future. So the compass, I wonder if it's going to be like armor where you're going to have to press the button and you pull it out. Or if it's going to be a total third party item. So like you're going to have to put your gun away to pull out your binoc binoculars, sorry, your compass. So it will be like basically pulling out your pistol where you won't be holding a gun because you're holding your compass. And the thing with the binoculars as well, that will be interesting to see whether we could finally understand how range works in this game. So possibly adding a range finder with these binoculars might be a good way of doing this. A lot of you are going to be happy. The next location is going to be Streaks of Tarkov. He did say it will be easy to get lost in. We're definitely going to be hyped for this one because if it's going to be big and as vast as what they say it is, it's, it's going to be so much fun. And also, you're going to have to find labs within Streets of Tarkov as well. So this will be the first time that we're going to see that you're going to have to enter one raid to then enter another raid. So this this is going to be an interesting way because it might also start opening up where you, if you finish in woods, then you're going to have to go to shoreline. And then if you finish in shoreline, you're going to have... So if you want to get to Fatshu, basically, you're going to have to go through three or four raids to get to that location. That might be interesting to see. So you can't like jump around from, let's say, from shoreline to labs and then back to customs. And then, you know, so you're going to have to basically go through interchange 
customs, factory, and so on. That would definitely be one that would be interesting to see. An option to filter out swearing from PMC voice lines for streamers. Apparently there's two voices in one of the voice lines. I don't know whether it's Scav or if it's a PMC operator or if it's Scav boss that is could get you banned on Twitch, which is interesting. I never knew that. So yeah, be careful what you blur out as a Scav or a bear. Um, I'm assuming there's nothing really that bad in you sex because you can under well I can understand what they're saying and I've never had anything that was that bad to get banned on Twitch. So yeah, just just a PSA on that one a bit. <laughs> they are finally adding female to the game. So this is gonna be interesting. Nikita did call it a thick woman, but you know. Hint he did throw out there that they're not actually gonna be playable, so it might be a scav boss or a trader. So this will definitely be interesting as this, well, I mean, the only woman you got right now is a therapist, which is just a trader, not actually a physical person. So this will be interesting to see who this woman is or how you would interact with her. I'm assuming that it's just going to be a scab boss because if it's not playable, it's either going to, if you can't play it, then it's an enemy. So most likely going to be a scab boss or a trader possibly. They are modeling a few helmets which will protect the face. With this one, we was a bit confused at what they were saying. Possibly something along the lines of a Ronin, so it would basically be like a fill-on helmet that can actually withstand a bullet. I know at the end of last patch, the Ronin got a insane buff where the ricochet chance was... You just couldn't penetrate the Ronin, basically. So whether it's going to be something along the lines of that or just more face shields... Yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see with that one. Smoking will be coming to the game with a skill buff and a debuff. Now, this is interesting. The only thing I could think of a skill buff is possibly stress resistance. Right before a fight, you can have a cigarette and then, you know, or straight after the fight. If you're having a adrenaline surge or something, it could calm you down. That one's going to be interesting to see how smoking will be a skill buff, really. Yeah. Items are becoming limited, as in if they're popular, there'll be a lack of an item and an overflow of unpopular items, meaning the hideout will be becoming essential for the economy, e.g. bullets, guns, and high-end items. So, as everyone knows, 995, you can only buy $208 a bullet. So what I'm assuming by this is that he is going to start limiting these kind of items that we can see. There's something that we definitely need in our barter, not in our barter, in our hideout, is a armor smith or some way of repairing absolutely demolished armors. Because Ragman's current thing going on is that all of our money is basically going to Ragman because he is just a absolute god and wants everything under the sun. He is rolling around with his golden items right now. But if we have the ability to possibly repair our armors from, you know, 26 on a Gen 4, then pull it back up to 65 or whatever it is, then that might be a decent way. But guys, don't forget to be using your hideout for certain items. So T and Apollos can make Winstons, 17 Winstons that can get you an M1A. So those kind of things, just you got to keep an eye on and try and keep everything in your hideout going at once. So trying to make money basically uh, you've always got you've always got the flea market where you can buy items for cash but yeah it'd be interesting to see how limited these popular items end up getting phones will be added and used for ordering items or possibly insurance nikita did joke around that you can order a pizza but i'm not so sure how this would work in the sense of insurance items are we not going to have the insurance screen at the end this is definitely going to be a, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure what is going to be added with this. I we, we We're talking about it and we just couldn't actually work out how this is going to be implemented and useful in any way, really. Unless there's someone that you can call that can bring items from the flea market, but then you just get a mail anyway. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see what they do. Rolling on to the next one. ATMs to put money into your bank account. So they want to cut down on the amount of physical cash. So 
is there going to be an ATM in your hideout or you're going to have to be in raid to put money into your bank account? There will be something later on, which we might as well roll into the next one. Zones that you shouldn't kill in. And if you do, you lose comma, which will make the traders not work with you due to your reputation, a friendly zone, but can still be hostile, basically. I'm trying to be thinking of what this could be. So maybe something like in World of Warcraft, where you can have neutral zones where Horde and Alliance can be in. But then if they fight people, then the reputation goes down. I'm not so sure how that's going to be done. It would definitely be interesting to see whether we're going to be having to see a actual, you know, therapist or prepper or peacekeeper, or it's just going to be like a third party traders. Yeah, this would be interesting to see. Adding more buttons to the flea market to make it easier of use, navigation, filters, and so on. So the flea market for me can be quite buggy sometimes. So yeah, just making it a bit more easier to move around or just realize certain things. To be honest, it's not that bad at the moment going around through the flea market, but it'd be definitely nice to see a few more navigation and filters there. Around the new year, they want to fix presets. So we could possibly finally be able to share our weapon builds. That would be really good. So I can basically post them in all of my gunsmith videos and recall videos and all these kind of videos so yeah hopefully this will get fixed soon and plus what's what's the one that you get when you're as a about to buy all the items there's someone who's got it up where it says they're out of stock like but these are pmcs i'm not so sure how that works but that that one definitely needs to get fixed there will be a winter update so basically making it snowy That'd be quite cool. Hopefully we'll get some snow camouflage right there as well, which should be quite fun to lie down in there, actually. There will be trip wires. So this one's interesting. So that could be like claymore, trip wires, fl um, flash trip wires. Maybe you can like mount a gun onto the trip wire. So it's basically you shoot them or it could be a noise trip wire. This would be interesting to see how overpowered these can be. Um, I know that if as soon as they start adding claymores, people are going to be putting them, putting them down in high traffic areas, leaving the area, and then going back later on to get all the loot. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be interesting to see in the game, or how expensive they're going to be as well. Hydroponics will be added for growing fruit and veg in the hideout. Now this one is actually really good. So no more having to go over to the flea market and buying iskras for 20 plus K or buying, you know, enough crackers and croutons from the therapist to then get your endure, uh, to get your energy up and then having to drink a load of water to then, you know, get your water up because you lost all your water eating those croutons. And anyway, it would be great to have a, a definitive way of bringing in food into your hideout passively this one i'm definitely looking forward to continuing on graphics graphics cards will now have a durability so mining towers and those kind of things are going to be slowly getting damaged over time this is something personally i think makes sense i wouldn't say that they should you know disappear in let's say three weeks or so because you know graphics cards are pretty stable things but having a durability, so you can never find one that's possibly full durability out in the wild. And they're all like going to be sitting like half durability or so. I'd, if they can make the durability like not exactly the same. You know, it's like dynamic basically when you find it. I think this would be a really cool addition. So locks will be breakable. Is it just the locks that you got keys for or is it every single door that you can now break? Because if you can, that would be interesting. If it's just the locks ones, then, you know, that kind of makes more sense in my eyes. I kind of would like it if it was, you know, all doors could then be, you know, broken into or something. Because there's a few places on customs where you could, if you could break a lock, then you could definitely get on top of the roof. So that will be a interesting one to see moving on to the next one which will be there will be ways of making copies of keys in the hideout now i wonder if there's going to be a key mastery so let's say you can only have 
If you're level one, it's only got like one durability, and then level two will have two durability, and so on and so forth. That will be a interesting one to see because I know they're slowly adding durability to all the keys, as well as you know they're adding durability to lab keys as well. So yeah, this is definitely going to be interesting to see how it is. The game will be discussed in the future at a later time in 2020. So this is the entire podcast that we've noted down that is going to be a big thing to us. Hopefully this video hasn't been too dull and boring. There is a lot of points to cross. Some of them are very small and some of them are very big. There are two videos I want to show you of a MP9 teaser video and a drug injector video as well, which we'll be playing you know, now. But guys, hopefully this wasn't too long and too dragging. This is the first time covering something that is this big and long. <laughs> Cap of pride. But yeah, hopefully guys, you found this interesting. We will see you tomorrow for a news video. And guys, if you didn't already like this, make sure you like it. Comment down below which feature that you're looking forward to. And guys, I'll see you tomorrow.